But this uptick in cases we've seen in the last two weeks has a lot of people thinking we're heading into another wave of the pandemic. After the initial bump in March and April, then another swell in July and August, some are seeing this as the third wave. One local historian says it's not, not even close. Back in 2011, Tara Rowe started studying the 1918 flu pandemic and its effects in Idaho. The pandemic lasted until 1920, and by then, Tara told us, about 95,000 Idahoans had been infected. And that was 22% of the population back then. And that's just about what we know about. Her research had Tara pouring over death certificates to try to track the virus, but even those were misleading, and therefore the numbers aren't exactly accurate. Now jump ahead to 2020, and Tara says it's common for people, when looking at the current COVID pandemic, to compare the two and take note of the waves in which the 1918 pandemic swamped us. She told us today how in that first wave in the United States, in the spring of 1918, it hit military camps hard, and we actually spread it around the world by sending those soldiers to war. Well, after the warm summer of 1918, it came back to the U.S. in a big way. In Idaho, just like the rest of the country, if you look at the number of cases, about 50,000 of them come in that second wave in Idaho, which is from first case until the end of the year. And then half of that, 25,000 or so, come in the second wave, which will come in again the spring of 1919. And then you have another 25 or so cases that happen at the end of 1919 into 1920. And here is where we get into the question of waves versus spikes. And people will say, like Idaho, we're talking about the third spike. You hear it talked about as the third wave, but really we're in the first wave because with the 1918 flu, when a wave ended, it was like a cliff. It just dropped off and then it was gone. And there were maybe a few cases, no outbreaks. Here we're seeing more of a, you know, we reach a peak and we fall down a bit, but we never hit bottom to where we have very few cases at all. We stay, you know, about halfway up where we were, were the peak. So with Idaho, we really have never had that drop off. That drop off was supposed to happen during the warm summer months if the COVID pandemic followed the pattern of the previous pandemic a century ago. It didn't. COVID hasn't gone away in the summer. If you look at Idaho, our big numbers came in July and August. So really, it hasn't gone away. And that is specific to the United States. If you look at other countries, say Italy, they had huge spike, then they drop off. So we look at that as their wave. Why is it important to make that distinction between spikes and waves? Well, part of it is because of our history, of, of the way that we have seen these things happen before. You can't compare pandemics if you're talking about them in different terms. So it's really important that as we eventually, the history is written about COVID, it has to be right in that, you know, we didn't, we didn't get out of our first wave necessarily before we finally hit second wave territory. In her research, Tara also found other things to compare, including a wide range of suggestions on how to stop the spread. What seemed to work back then? You know, the same things that work now, actually, quarantine, um, social distancing, um, they banned large gatherings, first as indoor gatherings and then eventually as outdoor gatherings. Um, masks. They started first with gauze masks and saw that there was some, some help there. Each county kind of had their own approach to it. Ada County said, stay in your houses. Um, Payette and Custer County said, we don't want any of you coming into our counties. Chalice put armed guards on the, the railway tracks to try to keep people out. But, you know, the same things. It really was a matter of of following these very simple steps. As for deaths, well, that number is one of the many mysteries about the 1918 pandemic. What we do know, says Tara, is that some Idaho counties couldn't keep up with the count, and death certificates back then weren't exactly, well, exact. If a victim wasn't diagnosed before death, there was a lot left to interpretation. So we ultimately, we don't know ex an exact number how many people in Idaho died during the 1918 pandemic. No, we don't. We can, we can only guess even for 
the country, we say about 675,000 Americans died. We have no idea for the world. There is like an estimate of 25 to 50 million people. So that's a big, you know, range there. So we don't know. We don't know why it left, where it went, why it disappeared. Well, the 1918 flu didn't really disappear completely. The strain just did. It was caused by the H1N1 virus, which is a subtype of the influenza A virus. And the last time we saw a significant outbreak of that was back in 2009. 2009. No, yeah, there were pushbacks back a century ago when it came to limiting gatherings and requiring a mask. That hasn't changed. Another similarity, both pandemics were worse for minority populations, mostly because of the tight knit conditions where they lived. And I asked Tara if it was too easy to compare the two pandemics, and she said, not really. If you look at it by numbers alone, we've had about 41,000 cases so far in Idaho in just six months. By the end of 1918, 48,000 Idahoans had been infected with the flu. So when could we see the second wave of COVID-19? I guess we have to get through the first first.